me within an hour, an hour and a half. It started and over with, and now it's gonna take you years to, and it will never be the same. You'll never get it back the way people remembers it and, and your family life and all. We knew it was coming. The storm had been brewing for days, somewhere out to our west, sweeping into Arkansas and giving us a preview of what to expect. We knew it was coming, but that didn't make it any easier. By mid-morning on that Monday, local teachers were calling parents to collect their children. Law enforcement officers and first responders were on alert. A state of emergency had been declared. Tornadoes will be possible today. Some could be strong, possibly long-tracked. But there will be a band of storms that will begin to uh, line up right along the Natchez Trace. It looks like somewhere in this corridor. And a lot of people down here know that you can almost smell severe weather. And it looked and it felt and it smelled like a severe weather day. Keith and Heather and Megan were, they've always been very good on their forecasting skills. And, and they were going ahead and bracing us for it then. So um, I just, that is, that's always, I've always had a sixth sense about storms and I just, I knew this one wasn't going to be good. Uh, I just, um, I just had that feeling. I remember very distinctly Wednesday and Thursday prior as we were going into the weekend, I listened to the cues of our meteorologists. I really do. And I always pray for them to say something like, it's setting up to be pretty bad, but I think it'll be fine. It'll fizzle out by then. But he never said that. We did have a plan in place. Probably about 72 hours before, we made sure everybody was on standby. We had our full staff ready to go. As a matter of fact, he said, Wednesday, we got a pretty bad system setting up here. I'm not feeling too good about it. Thursday, he said, and this was off camera because he wasn't trying to alarm the viewers. He was, he kept saying to me, I don't feel good about this at all. And I remember coming to work that morning and just praying the whole time, going, God, please help these people because I didn't know it was coming. I knew it was going to be bad. I knew we had to say and use the hard words like a tornado that we have a good chance. And when we show that graphic that we're on the high end, um, we have a good chance of seeing a tornado today. I came in early, did the noon show, and then as soon as we were halfway through the noon show, we got the first tornado watch that was issued for our area. And then by one o'clock, we got that first tornado warning. And like I said, everything went down like dominoes after that. We were watching our sky cam from Pontotoc, a lowering in the cloud. No tornado occurred in Pontotoc County, but just as that storm slipped east and out of the view of our sky cam, just as it was moving into Lee County, it did drop that tornado. And that was the first big storm of the day. It was also um, produced uh, that EF3 tornado. And that really got the ball rolling the whole day that I guess set the precedent for the entire day. We take it very seriously. Um, we brand ourselves as being five minutes faster because we've invested the money for our viewers so that we can tell them when a tornado is tracking down upon their home. We could actually see the debris show up on our colors. The Doppler radar can do a lot of things, and one of the things now is that it can sense what is a raindrop, what is hail, and what is man-made debris or trees or other objects that should not be in the sky. What you're seeing as far as the debris is not the actual uh, tornado um, size. The debris field with this is being spread out many more miles than the actual tornado. So the, the tornado and it just matched up classically what you would expect, which is, it's bad news that the tornado was occurring, but one of those things that we can now see with radar gave us a clue that this was a, a dangerous storm and it was moving to the northeast of Tupelo into uh, parts of Itawamba County. Within the next hour, we were tracking that monster supercell storm in Winston County. And we have a new tornado warning that does include parts of uh, Winston County. We have a report of a uh, large and extremely dangerous tornado located near, um, I think it's uh, Zama, Zama, Z-A-M-A, and moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. We have thunderstorms around here all the time. And when we're talking supercells, these are storms that rotate. And the atmosphere set up on the 28th was uh, really set up specifically to allow these storms to rotate 
and their updrafts are tilted just a little bit. And if they're tilted just a little bit, the storm will sustain itself for hours and hours. A tornado emergency on average is only issued in Mississippi once a year. And this is where it is right now. You see that circle, that ring. That's where we're seeing that rotation with the storm. Louisville, take cover right now. Yes. Nossipater, take cover right now. If you are anywhere in downtown Louisville, you need to take cover. We it was up until April 28th. We've almost been in a tornado drought since records have been kept. And now we're setting ourselves up for a potentially dangerous situation. Lee County, Itawamba County, number one, tornado number one, and then of course the, the monster storm from uh, Atala into Winston County too. So those supercell storms are the ones that really are the most concerned. Those are the ones that are gonna produce the tornadoes and a large hail. We do have a tornado emergency. We do have confirmation of a tornado on the ground in Winston County. There it is in southwestern parts of the county moving and paralleling Highway 25. The Winston County storm was on the ground for about 35 miles. Very few tornadoes are EF4 or EF5. And when you get one of those things, especially a strong EF4 tornado, which was the one in, in Winston County, those are the uh, ones you really just have to look back and say, wow, that was a monster. So this is the heart of the tornado path and um, it came in from the southwest and moved up to the northeast and just devastating. The, the tighter the wind, it's like a figure skater. When that figure skater gets all tight and spins, that's just like a tornado. When it gets all narrow and uh, constricted, it tends to spin faster. As soon as that tornado was um, developing in Winston County, it was throwing debris up 30,000 feet and the strong wind in the uh, mid-levels of the atmosphere was taking it and blowing it off to the northeast, all the way into West Alabama. And it's one of those storms that was so rare and so strong that you know we, we could see the damage from outer space. Our sheriff lost everything. Uh, I'll show you a house right up here. He, he's over the uh, power, city power and all. But you know we have to keep going. I mean, we got our people we have to take care of county, city, you know, we had to take care of our family, had to take time for our family, but still, we had to keep going. The people were prepared in some ways because we had talked about the, the storm being so severe and, and, and deadly potentially. We, leading up to the event, we were talking about be sure to have that tornado plan in place because having a plan really helps with that anxiety, really helps to not be as scared because if you have a plan, then you know what to do. On these big events, you just plan on warning after warning, and at some point, I think we had about six or seven tornado warnings at a time, and the adrenaline just takes over, and you, you, time just flies. You have no idea what time it is. During these busy weather days, we'll toggle on these little symbols, these little circles, and these little lines, and those are areas of rotation within the thunderstorm, the little circles, and these little markers called skits. It's a little indication of the direction of the storm. When you're getting prepared for that and knowing that, and then you see the storm coming and you're seeing the rotation on the radar. That's exactly right. So we have yet to see this symbol show up since we've had Viper installed here. And the computer will analyze the storm as the radar beam scans around. Every couple of minutes, the computer will update through its algorithms what it's thinking the storm is capable of, where it's going, how big is the hail? What's the tornado threat? So we were looking at all of that stuff as that day was unfolding. We're trying to, to, to tell the folks in Tupelo that, hey, this is what you've gone through. And at the same time, we've got Winston County. And we've got tornadoes on the ground in Winston County that we're having to tell people about. And then we have the tornadoes moving into Lance County. It was very hectic to me and the rest of the weather staff to monitor our conversations with the National Weather Service and storm spotters, emergency managers, trying to get all this information ingested in our minds. And then at the same time, we're on the air, wall to wall, live, and you just have to stay with it. That storm that was in Winston County stayed together. The tornado lifted just as it uh, uh, got a around the east side of Louisville, but the tornado lifted, the storm held together, and that same storm complex is the one that moved through the Columbus area, 
We had five tornadoes reported in the vicinity of Lowndes County. And one was actually the EF2 that was making a beeline right towards Columbus. When you hear that, um, that it's on 82, and, you, and you're thinking in your mind that, well, 82, well, that's, you know, that's a quarter of a mile from here. So I have sat out in our newsroom and fielded phone calls from, you know, school superintendents wanting to know if the kids should be out of school and from concerned parents and just people in general. So many, many storms. Um, however, in my memory, I think this is the first time I have heard the words go to the basement from our meteorologist. Uh, and it was a scary feeling. It was 